Now available for the first time on Google Play, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are falling apart in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy on Google Play today. One of my viewers wanted me to talk about an extremely disturbing incident that took place in Loudoun County, Virginia. Now, I don't know what is more disturbing, the criminal behavior of the teenage boy in this incident or the behaviors of the adults who ran the school district. Now, according to reports, a teenage boy who was dressed in a skirt and a rainbow shirt and was trying to pass himself off as a transgender, decided to go into a girl's bathroom where he sexually assaulted a 14-year-old girl by sodomizing her. And in the aftermath of this teenage boy participating in this criminal sex act, your school district did not report the incident. Instead, what they did was go out of their way to find a way to bury the incident and then sent the boy to another school where he then participated in the rape and sodomy of another teenage girl. Now, when I take a critical examination of this teenage boy's behavior, it fits the pattern and profile for sexually deviant beta males that I talk about in my book, the man crisis. And when I take a look at this boy's behavior, it fits the chapters I talk about regarding the sexual deviancy of the beta male. And it's clear to me that this teenage boy was exposed to pornography at a very early age. And as a result of being exposed to pornography at an early age, this boy gained an extremely twisted perception of sex. And due to the dysfunctional household that this boy grew up in, he clearly does not understand the concept of boundaries, and he was looking for ways to violate people's boundaries by going into this girl's bathroom to sexually sodom assault these teenage girls, and then was escalating his behavior from sexual assault all the way up to rape. So there was already a clear pattern of criminal behavior with this teenage boy. Unfortunately, many of the adults were so afraid of offending the alphabet community that they were not thinking critically about this boy's already escalating criminal behavior. No, they were so afraid of being called homophobic that they practically denied the fact that there was criminal behavior going on in their schools and that this boy was out here looking to do harm to women. Now, it's clear to me from looking at this boy's, uh, as reported, violent behavior that he was definitely a ticking time bomb. And what was scary about him was people were willing to give him a pass and allow him to do more damage to another girl. Instead, And instead of trying to acknowledge the problem with this boy because they were afraid of offending the alphabet community, what they did was try to sweep one incident under the rug and then allow this boy to continue to go on to do harm to someone else. And that is one of the most disturbing things about this entire incident that took place in Loudoun County, Virginia, was that your school board officials were willing to let a teenage sexual predator continue to go on because they were afraid of offending the alphabet community. And that really should not be the case because this boy's behavior clearly was not about him being a member of the alphabet community. No, this boy was using a facade of being a transgender as a way to participate in his sexual deviancy and further perpetrate more sex crimes because that's what this boy really was. It was he was a sexual criminal and he was a pervert looking to go out here and pervert people's personal issues as related to politics so he could go out here 
and be able to participate in sex crimes. Now, this is one of the concerns many parents have about your alleged transgenders going into female spaces is that there will be perverts and sexual deviants like this who will go out here and exploit the whole uh, issues going on as related to alphabet rights to go out here and use them and abuse them to go out here and participate in sex crimes. That is what a lot of people are truly concerned about related to these kinds of incidents. And this incident here really shows how your adults are just too afraid to stand up out here and stand up for what's right because no girl should have to fear a sexual predator like this when adults are around. Now, what's even more troubling is that at a school board meeting, the mother of this son went out here and confronted the daughter who was Violated's father and tried to tell that father that her boy did nothing wrong. Now, this was even after, as I, I was reading in the article, I think he was convicted of this crime. They wanted to sit there and deny that a sex crime happened, and she wanted to sit there and act like nothing happened at all and wanted to make it look like her son was innocent. But how is your son innocent when he's already been convicted of one sex crime and is getting ready to be put on trial for another. That's a critical question that I would like to ask, but in this case, we see that this mother is clearly in denial about her son's depraved behavior, and because she was in denial about her son's depraved behavior, and because the adults were too afraid of offending people, sadly, this predator went on to, dis to violate another girl, and he wound up practically doing trauma to the, this other girl mentally. But this is sadly what happens when you have adults who are more caught up in keeping up po the appearance of being politically correct instead of trying to hold someone accountable. Clearly that this boy had serious issues as related to sex and sexuality, and he definitely either was exposed to pornography at an early age or he was possibly sexually abused at an early age because that is the only two reasons that a boy would go out here and participate in this type of deviant sexual behavior and believe that it is his right to go out here and participate in violating a woman and doing this and believing that it was okay. Now, what's even more disturbing then the school districts covering this story up is, again, the response of the mother who went on after confronting the father to go out here and say that the girl should have fought back. Now, as from what I know about male and female physiology, a man is eight times stronger in his upper body, and a teenage boy is definitely stronger than a teenage girl. And it's hard for a girl to fight back someone when she is when he's physically stronger than her. And while he may be wearing a skirt, he's still biologically and physically a man. And that makes it where he can possibly overpower that girl who cannot fight back. And that's one of the things that really disturbed me about hearing this mother. Here is a woman sitting there denying the problems that are going on with her sexually deviant son, who clearly has serious issues as related to sex and has become a sexual predator. And instead of her t acknowledging the problems with her son, then goes on to sit there and say, oh, the girl should have fought back. Well, a girl should feel safe inside of a public school and she should feel safe from having to deal with sexual predators. And that that environment was made unsafe by the school district, which, again, refused to acknowledge this boy's extremely disturbing, sexually deviant, and sexually violent behavior because 
people were afraid of being called homophobic. And again, this has nothing to do really with the alphabet community. This boy had serious issues as related to his upbringing, and it's clear to me that his mother was extremely dysfunctional from her statements because she's sitting there trying to say that this girl who was the victim of this boy should have fought him off. But again, how can a girl fight a boy off who she thinks is not going to hurt her? Because a lot of girls, they sit there and they think, okay, this is a transgender using the bathroom. They're not thinking that this man is going to go out here and participate in a sex crime. They're just thinking this boy is using the bathroom just like them, and they have no idea what's in this boy's mind. So to sit there and try to say, oh, the girl should have fought back, well, the boy should have been taught never to put his hands on a girl, and he should have been taught to respect the boundaries of a young woman. That is what a healthy mother says to her son, and that's what a healthy mother teaches her son, whether he be a straight man, a gay man, a bi man, or a transgender man, she teaches him that it, he needs to keep his hands to himself and he needs to respect the boundaries of other people. That is what a healthy teenage boy does, but there's nothing healthy about this boy because if he wound up getting convicted of, being, of participating in one sexual assault and is on trial for another, that really shows us that this boy was not raised to be any sort of healthy at all, and clearly he has some serious issues as related to sex, and he has some real serious issues as related to sexual deviancy that need to be dealt with by mental health counselors, and hopefully he will be getting that kind of help inside of a juvenile detention facility where he needs to be if he has not been charged as an adult and sent to prison. Because this boy's behavior clearly shows that he's one of these beta males who is in crisis, and he has already gone out here and done harm two times, and I fear that if he does not get the help that he needs, he may go out here and do more harm to other girls, because clearly this is a heterosexual man who has sexually deviant tendencies and has nothing to do with the alphabet community, but you'll have people who are afraid of speaking out because they're afraid of offending people, but you cannot be afraid of offending people because this type of male is a clear and present danger to others, and what's sad here is we had adults who were not looking out for the safety of children out of fear of offending a group of people in the alphabet community, and it shouldn't be like that at all, because any healthy alphabet person would not want a sexual predator out here and, get, leave it, and let this person to continue to go on to harm others. So I look at this incident, and it fits that pattern and profile I talk about for about beta males in my book, The Man Crisis, and it's really disturbing how these adults went out of their way to deny this boy in crisis was a danger to others, and all because they were afraid of offending some people's um, people because their political opinions were different. And it, it's really scary to show how people just don't want to acknowledge this man crisis in this country, because when you have boys like this participating in this kind of behavior, they definitely are in crisis, and they definitely need help. But because adults are too afraid to give those boys those that help, this is why these boys go on to escalate their sexual deviancy to sexual violence. And, excuse me, had this boy not been caught, what would have happened was he would have gone on to further escalate his deviant sexual behavior, and he possibly would have possibly taken somebody's life. Because I've seen the pattern as related to these beta males in my years of research on the beta male, and their behavior escalates, and this boy's behavior was escalating very quickly, and he was going from one sodomized sexual assault to going to rape, and then eventually he was going to go into murdering someone, because that is the pattern that these guys participate in, 
and thank God they were able to catch him before he wound up taking somebody's life. But we really need more American people to acknowledge this man crisis and not have their heads in the sand like the members of the school district who denied this whole incident and denied how dangerous this type of male is because we have two to three generations of males out here like this and if we don't acknowledge how dangerous these males are they're going to further escalate their behaviors and they're going to participate in more disturbing violence than this and I would hate to see another young girl or young boy wind up losing their life or having their lives scarred by someone like this because we really need to acknowledge the man crisis in this country so that we can get more of these males back in line and we can start moving America ahead. But the only way we can move America ahead is if when people start acknowledging this man crisis going on across this country and all of the damage it is doing to our young boys and our young men. Now, if you want to learn more about the, the behaviors of beta males and what causes them to participate in behaviors like this, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis on Smashwords, the iBook store, and Google Play. Now, this was a video requested by a viewer, and it will not be monetized because of YouTube's policies regarding um, certain content. So if you could donate to the Patreon, the PayPal, the Cash App, like the viewer did, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you want me to make a video and that you request, I can you can donate to the Cash App. And if I know something about that topic, I'll make that video for you. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.